I've said for years that presidential elections are rigged against the American people. And I had people that were legitimately intelligent, they were smart people, tell me that it was ludicrous, that it was a conspiracy theory. Well, now the same people that I've talked to agree with me, especially after the 2016 election primaries where this was proven to be factual. Now, if you don't know how the election process, at least in primaries, works, you don't actually vote for a candidate. You vote for a delegate, which is somebody who will represent you at that political party's convention, which is generally held in the summer before the general election. Sound a little fishy yet? It should. Next, this delegate is supposed to vote for the candidate that you want the candidate in question. For instance, if I want Donald Trump to be the nominee, or John Kasich, or Ted Cruz, and I go vote for them in the primary, then that delegate will represent me and will vote for Donald Trump at the ballot at the convention. There's only one problem. When you have this intermediary, if you will, between the candidate becoming elected and the voters of the United States, fraud and theft can be easily ascertained by the powers that be. The main concern is that a candidate that isn't of the establishment, somebody who represents the people of the United States and not the corporate elites, will have the nomination of a major political party stolen from them when these delegates, who are usually party insiders and establishment figures, can use this power to sabotage grassroots movements. We're going to break down how Donald Trump was able to subvert the rigged system on the Republican side and how Hillary Rodham Clinton stole the nomination through their rigged system on the Democratic side from Bernie Sanders of Vermont. We'll begin with the Republican Party. Now, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas won states such as Colorado and Wyoming by unanimous delegate voting. These states did not actually hold primaries, yet the delegates of the Republican Party of those states, they were the ones that voted for Ted Cruz. A small group of people, 21 to be exact in Colorado, decided who the entire state would represent in voting for the GOP nominee. How is this fair? It's not, to say the least, and considering the fact that this was exposed, many people, including this man, were outraged that people like them did not get to vote for the candidate they wanted, probably Donald Trump, in this primary, and that the elites chose for them. Still fuming over what happened this morning down in um, Colorado Springs. This is a copy of my the Republican Party registration. I've been a Republican all my life, but I will never be a Republican again. I'm voting for Trump, and to hell with the Republican Party. Donald Trump was not silent when this occurred. In fact, he blatantly said that the system was rigged against him as he is a candidate that is outside the establishment and not a member of the corporate elites that dominate the people of the United States. But the system's rigged. And I'll tell you what, when you look at Colorado, and people can say, oh, well, that's the way the game's played. Look, they should have had an election. They didn't have an election. That system is set up so that the crooked politicians can make sure they get somebody in that's not, you know, part of what we're doing. The corporate media, owned by the same people who stole these elections in Colorado and Wyoming and prevented the people of those states from actually getting to vote, said that Trump was simply a sore loser. Note that Trump never complained when or if he lost a primary or caucus where there were actual voters and the people of the United States had their voice heard. Curly Hagland, a GOP delegate, said on CNBC that the media has purported the myth that the American people choose their representatives, meaning that the delegates, a small few of corporate elites, control who really wins in American politics. The media has created the perception that the voters will decide the nomination, and that's the concept, that's the conflict here. <laughs> we we the feel like we is, live in a democratic society. What you're telling me is it's not a democratic society, and your votes don't right. necessarily matter because it's a democratic representation. Now, how did Donald Trump, an anti-establishment candidate, win the nomination for the Republican Party? It's very simple. He won in massive landslides in large primary states, and these delegates were forced to vote for him 
at the GOP convention, with states like Indiana with 52%, New York with 64%, and California with 78% of the vote, Trump was able to manipulate the rigged system and become the GOP nominee. Now let's move over to the Democratic side to show how Bernie Sanders was completely robbed of that party's nomination. Emails leaked by WikiLeaks prove that the Democratic Party conspired with the Clinton campaign to have her become their nominee without the voters even being able to have a say. Unlike the Republican delegation system, the system that the Democrats use features two types of delegates. Bound delegates that are forced to vote for whoever the American people choose at primaries and caucuses, and unbound or super delegates, which are made up almost entirely of Democratic Party operatives. One of the complaints from Sanders supporters is that super delegates subvert the will of actual voters, that the establishment candidate effectively starts a race with 20% of the delegates in his or her pocket. Look at this graph. This is before we count super delegates into the mix. This is how close the Democratic primary would have been had it not had Democratic Party operatives, superdelegates. Now, add these superdelegates that are completely biased towards Hillary Clinton into the mix and look at the gap between Clinton and Sanders. The system is completely rigged. Even in states like New Hampshire, which Sanders won by 22 points, Hillary Clinton took nearly the same amount of delegates as Sanders did. Hillary Clinton lost to Bernie Sanders in New Hampshire by 22 percentage points, the biggest victory in a contested Democratic primary there since John F. Kennedy. But it looks as though Clinton and Sanders are leaving the Granite State with the same number of delegates in their pockets because Clinton has the support of New Hampshire's superdelegates, these party insiders. Unpledged delegates exist really to make sure that Party leaders and elected officials don't have to be in a position where they are running against grassroots activists. You may be thinking, well, the two parties have their nominees already. This is old news. Why is it relevant? Because if Hillary Rodham Clinton can conspire with large corporations, elite media, and the powers that be of the world that are all unanimously against Donald Trump to steal the nomination from Bernie Sanders, what is stopping her from doing the same thing on a national level this November? I'm afraid the election's going to be rigged, I have to be honest. Because... I think my side was rigged if I didn't win by massive landslides. The only way to prevent the illegitimate nominee Hillary Clinton from becoming the next president of the United States is to repeat what happened in the Republican primaries on a grander scale this general election. You must now register to vote and go out and vote for Donald Trump on November 8th. It is imperative that he wins this election. Our nation's future, our sovereignty, and our constitution are all at stake. Thank you, and please share this video.